And we're live! And Huzzah! it's already small. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> technical difficulties. That's okay. Straight off the bat. You know, this is going to be a good show when there's technical difficulties. <laughs> yep. At least your graphics card doesn't need updating. Exactly. So, how are we all doing today, my dudes? There we go. That's warm. <laughs> yeah, very warm, very warm, very very hot country. Very hot. Ah, yeah. I'm sure it's worse in other places, but for us, you know, we're Brits, we complain about all forms of weather. <laughs> yeah. God, it's too rainy. Oh, it's too windy. Oh, it's too exactly, sunny. Exactly. Oh, God, this is going to be a good one. So, today we've got a lot to cover through. Uh, with me always is my good pal, Erlem. Uh, Hello. Uh, say hi to everyone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've seen you've been doing a lot with um, Ranger Wrap Up, which is awesome. Have you been yep. enjoying that thus far? I have indeed, kind sir. I have. It's been a lot of fun. A lot of people winding us up. Well, me and Jezza mainly. <laughs> but it's been good. It's been good. I love how like a US and UK team <laughs> office occurring for that. Because <laughs> yeah. if there's anyone that knows how to take the mic, it's Brits. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's in our DNA. Right, so oh, I'm here as always, Henshin, bringing you a little that Sentai hype, because we love Super Sentai, yeah. and let's uh, talk about sort of the first thing we're going to kind of go around but first. Before we talk about your Zenkaijas and your full power <laughs> throttle, yay, <laughs> you didn't watch Saber, which is a key point to <laughs> this episode. I know... It, to be honest, it stems down to my pal Koraday, which might be, who might be watching this at a later date. Um, I said to him, he will come round. We'll have we'll all have pizza sorted out or some form of food, because he's vegan now. So pizza probably not as great as an option. But um, we was gonna sit down and watch the premiere of both Zenkaija and Kamen Rider Saber. Obviously, COVID hit. I started doing this show, so I had to watch uh, uh, Zenkaija anyway. And Saber was not really on the table because we couldn't ever meet up. And I didn't want to premiere it without him. Because I know what he's like. He, he, he has like a, you know, a lot of stuff he usually has to do. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure you could have gone, is it okay if I watch this one episode because it's part of what happens in Zenkaija? And I'm sure you'd have been like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, but, yeah, I suppose, I suppose. But we're going to play a game yeah. of, is what I say correct, or am I lying? <laughs> right, before we get into that, let's actually talk about some Zenkaija merch that has been flagging up everywhere. So, uh, let's go on to the images for that. Oh, that's not for, that's the top. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> Sorry guys, hearing this is something too early. So, first thing we got. The gears, we're having like proper like memor memorabilia sort of like gears being released that features all of the gears except for the, like the rangers in the series other than Zen uh, Zenkaiser. So all of these are like perfectly finished as you would expect, just like the batteries you've seen for Kiryuja and obviously some key sets from Gokaija. Uh, what do you think of this particular set, Erlem? The die cast look really nice. Um, I feel though you don't need to buy any other gear if you buy this set. Exactly. Uh, something yeah. like, I think it's like 200, 300 quid, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kind of works out at like maybe like a fiver per gear. So you could justify it if you're putting it into that one. Yeah. But I have thought about buying this and going, I don't need to buy the toys anymore. And then buy the toys anyway. Yeah, I know what you mean. To be honest, it's one of those things where, obviously, for us, we're importing it. So it probably would be more cost-effective just to get this set than trying to individually source out each and every gear from this particular series. So it's a good way to not only get a quality item, but also to get everything you need that's featured in this mm. particular show. Obviously, it does suck, because it doesn't include the gears for the other rangers, including Duran, Majin, Vroon, and... Um, go on so yeah you're kind of excluded from those and two kaiser as well uh obviously wow. there's other things but everything else like the representation of every season in a gear is there apparently there is a two kaiser gear oh is there ah, I'm i just hearing of that my friend my friend told me about it um because he said apparently there is a, a, a photo i'm gonna try and find it as we continue <laughs> talking um Diecast 
Zenkite. It apparently is in one of the images. Um, but I'm not going to say it's official. I just know it's there. Okay, well, since, oh yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. I think this is a really good set, though. You know, having something like this is something that everyone was probably expecting, uh, especially since this is obviously, um, you know, a season that's an anniversary. So, you know, all these diecast stuff. Um, now, there's generally difference between different forms of, uh, you know, items that you get. So, obviously, for certain releases you obviously have with the keys especially you have to put on the stickers or in the case of the uh, Judenchi from uh Kyuluja, you had to you had the like the numbers underneath the um under the names which i thought was really annoying or you had all kinds of different things placed on it which didn't i let that one didn't it meant sometimes you didn't get show accurate stuff from what you've seen, Erlem, do you think these are going to be exact representations of the show, or do you think they're going to have that little subtext that always spoils it a bit? <laughs> uh, the diecast ones will be, I think, 100% like the show type thing. Um, sometimes, like with the rest of them, I've seen like Gashapon and Candy and DX. Um, I think in general, I can't find that photo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think, no, these will look exactly the same as what they're looking in the show. Um, I just kind of wish that they filled up the holes where the screws are and then just yeah. kind of filled them in afterwards. You'd think with uh, the price included with it, they would do that. I mean, they're mm -hmm. releasing the Mobira, which we'll uh, obviously talk about in a bit, um, which is got so many of those screw holes covered. There's not a seam. It's, it's, it's basically a seamless model, so you've got no issues with it being show accurate in any angle. And I feel like if they can do that with the Mobira, then you should probably do the same with gears. I mean, I don't know how hard it is to make gears in general, um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe they just thought, oh, if we cover these, it's going to increase the price. Therefore, we probably shouldn't do it. So maybe that's what they were mm. kind of thinking. Do you think? No, I, I think they just thought, fuck it, let's just do yeah. it. Let's just bring it out. <laughs> um, no, I, I generally think that they could have done it. Um, mm. I think that it would have been easier. Like it could have been like when they've put in the disc, they could just inject the metal in, but yeah. maybe it could just be the part from where they couldn't. Um, who knows? But to be fair, you're not going to display it on the outside. You're going to literally keep it in. Not unless you bought two sets and then reversed them <laughs> so you have them, which yeah. would cost way too much. Exactly, exactly. I'm sure there's someone out there that does that, but we'll have to wait and find out. <laughs> Okay, so I saw these images pop up on Twitter, um, which I think you might like. Wait for it to come up. <laughs> yep. Gotta wait so for I it. think these are full perspective f uh, photos of um, Magin. I'm guessing in a magazine or something, like probably in the artwork that I might officially release in a book. I'm not entirely sure. I thought it was worth bringing up because it's nice to see full um, portrait versions of the entire Ranger outfit. With, and oh. at first, I thought this was a toy, so I was like, oh, Ellen would love this, but then I just realized, ah, no, it's not. It's just a profile photo of the actual Ranger suit. But I thought can it was. Be... Can yeah. we get it as a cardboard cutout? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just love how, like, you have all of these elements sort of, like, shown for Imagine, just the whole sort of concept, having the weapon. Mm. I think I think riding her broom, as it were, was pretty cool to see in this image. But it's it's just, it's just nice to have these sort of photo uh, you know photo um moments in it. So I thought I would brush that in just a little bit. But um I... the real thing I wanna show everyone that's to do with Zenkaiju as well is Should... actually to do with this we are getting confirmation that there's a fourth quarter item and the final robo of the series, which is actually called the, uh, uh, let me just zoom in, Zoryuku Zenkai <laughs> Cannon. Now, I have no idea what that is, but so, I will quickly say, yeah. <laughs> you know that Magine picture, how, like, I, I know she's cute. But I just know it's a Japanese man inside that suit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, you never know, you never know. Uh, okay, sorry, you have really got to sort of stop resizing for me. Um, <laughs> That's fine. But anyway, um, so yeah, for this, it means there's another robo coming, which is something to look forward to, so great. And I, I don't know why you keep changing I size. I generally thought, fight you. when you talk about the cannon in that picture, I was like, oh, that's not Zenkaiju, that's Digimon. 
and I no. realized. Oh yeah, no, Duke. it's Duke. Come on, um, on uh, you know online forums that point found out about it. So obviously, as you can see here, there has been different canon forms that we've had for different Super Sentai's. Uh, namely, obviously, people might recognise um the Deco Rangers uh swap. Uh, well, mm. as we know, it's SWAT Megazord. So that's one of the most um, obviously renowned cannons of our time, I suppose. Obviously, it goes back further than that. You've got Jetman and even ones before that as well. But I think it's cool how this kind of mecha is returning because it is mm. kind of one of those things that stands out in Simper Sentai. And obviously, we've seen it in Power Rangers too. Yeah. But it's yeah. Really, <laughs> really random question, right? You know how this is meant to be a, a mecha series? It yes. doesn't feel like a mecha series. It no, generally it doesn't. doesn't. <laughs> I feel like they've put more emphasis on anniversary than they have on mm. the mecha theme. So um, I think, like I think we've said this before, haven't we? It would have been cooler if they had used the gears and it gave them different Megazord powers mm. and different Ranger powers, because obviously that's kind of fits the theme a bit more. But obviously, because it's anniversary season, they didn't want to do the same as Go Kaija, but they still wanted to spin off enough that it was something different. So, but yeah, I mean, to see the representation of the Rangers as Zords is one of the things I just love most about this series anyway. So, I can't complain. There's some things that tick the box. So, <laughs> but yeah, um, do you think this is going to be a good representation of another season, this particular Zord? If they do it. I will be kind of glad. I'll be like, do you know what? This is actually kind of cool. Um, mm. It'll be interesting to see how it's going to be done. So I'm all up for it. If it's going to be the final robot, I, I generally thought we had, that was it. But obviously we've got more coming in. So I'm okay with this. Yeah. One thing I am worry, wor uh, wondering about, though, is obviously in um, Senkai just so far, every Zord has been representing the main megazord of a particular season with the exception of course of the uh zhu kaiju gear and the zords and stuff that sort of brings about with it because those um do you oh. think that this one's i going to be representing a main team or do you think oh. it's going to be representing any of these ones <laughs> that you see here the heat has gotten to the computers and thus therefore is killing it oh no there we go. i've got my fan on <laughs> I don't know. You just froze for a very long time. Oh dear, so. oh dear. So, uh, sorry, as I reiterate again, do you think that the final mecha that they're releasing, which is a canon sort of, has a canon sort of form, will be a representation of these mechas that we currently see before you, like the Swap Megazord, or do you think it's going to be like a core ranger team? Because obviously, we've had the Kaiju that's representing Sixth Rangers, so what do you think of this one might be? I kind of think it might be. I know we've seen it before. The Gatlinger, like a, a mechanized version of their morphers. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. And Maybe he, just a giant I sex chat. You know, I, I, I'd be. Uh, I was thinking, would it be a? Uh, I would be up for it. if it was a sex chat. I'd be more important about yes, please do that. <laughs> yeah, that would be grand. It would be grand. So, uh, okay, before we go on to the next part, let's um, back up a little bit. Now, as everyone's probably seen online, with an announcement that was made by Two Kaiser, we're getting a Go Kaiser 10 year movie. Yes. Um, like 10 years after the movie. I can't wait for this. This is going to. I think this is what someone's been asking for for a while, because obviously, I mean, it is like 10 years or so, roughly, since that. Um, Obviously, Zenkaiju was supposed to be last year, technically, but obviously got pushed back because of COVID and whatnot. Um, so, one question I have for you, uh, Mark. Okay. What was your first impressions when you heard about the uh, movie for Gokaiju? <laughs> Neat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was quite happy with it, to be fair. Yeah. I was like, uh, oh, okay. I, I had heard something, like I think, last year that there was roughly, like, there was going to be a 10-year type uh, anniversary for Gokaija. So I was like, do you know what? I, I think that's going to happen. Um, I just didn't know what was going to happen, like, what they were going to do. Yeah. So I was happy. Like, Gokaija is their one that they go for. Uh, I reckon when the chips are down, bring out Gokaija. It yeah. sells. It does, it does. It does make you wonder, though, what they're planning to do for the storyline. Because as people may have seen from the trailer, they are fighting rangers again. 
and they're possibly even fighting each other so it does make you wonder what the concept is in this particular movie um now obviously we're most likely going to see keys used from seasons beyond Ojo when they last appeared um mm -hmm. is there any particular key that you would like to see released Imagine. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't know because there wasn't that many series that I watched after Go Kaija. Um, I think I would love a Lupin versus Pata Ranger key set. I think that would be oh, beautiful. I know, yeah. I mean, you no, know it's going to be limited edition and it's going to be super expensive. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I even like. This is something I believe is going straight to a sort of Blu-ray and DVD release yep. rather than in cinemas, which is great for the Western audiences, but at the same time, I'll explain why you should be a little bit like, ah. It's so. doing both. <laughs> it's, the, it, it's, having a cin it's having a selective cinema release in Japan mm. and a DVD release and Blu-ray release next year. But exactly, yeah. the main thing is it comes with the key. It comes oh, yes. with the key. But it's only limited edition, which each one costs about £100. Yeah. It's expensive, <laughs> and I've ordered two. <laughs> You've ordered two? I want that extra key. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, we have the title here looking awesomely cinematic, but it's a lot more... I think it's set in a little more of a darker tone. Or it seems more gritty, as is what they're trying to do. Um, so, um, here we go. We've got the thing. So, in addition, addition to the new power-up, as we'll be getting... There's going to be something called Cross Armor Mode, which is two new super uh, super modes for Gokai Red and Gokai Blue, yes. which is so fascinating because of the fact that obviously the only power up in Gokai Ja was really belonging to Gokai Silver when it had all the representation six ranges. So, do you think this is a long time coming at all, Mark? Um, not really, because I kind of thought like I've seen uh, Marvelous wear the suit like th twice you know the armored mode so i kind of thought that was that was the only power up in the series yeah um so it didn't really kind of phase me but it was nice to have like the six ranger to have the shield so marvelous not getting a power up it's fine but then now he's wearing it i'm like huh interesting that's yeah, really yeah. cool yeah so obviously i will see a picture in a moment of those particular forms but let's talk about what you brought up the key now when i first saw this picture I honestly thought it was just a little model of the ship that they mm. obviously have in the show. No, I couldn't be more wrong. I couldn't believe when I found out this was actually the key that unlocks those power-ups. And it I, like, it baffled me. I, I, when I saw this image, I was like, oh, okay, fair and figure. Never in my mind did I think, oh, that's actually a key. Obviously, if you read the text, it explains otherwise, but I was baffled. So, this flips out at the bottom. And on the other, uh, over the top side, obviously, you've actually got the different colours of each of the ranges, and it goes straight onto the key and sort of adds a nice double logo effect. Um, is this some, the reason why you spent <laughs> so much um, on this? To be fair, it was the... I just, sorry, saw myself spill water on myself. Yay. Um, <laughs> I, I know that these things... <laughs> I know these things are going to be super expensive. One's from my friend that obviously he's giving me money for. But I had to have one because it's one of those things where if you sleep on it and go, oh, I don't really want one, mm, nah, you, you're never going to find it. Or it's going to be, hey, if you've got a 500 pounds spare, you can have it, the DVD and the Blu-ray and also the key. And it's the, the key is the main thing like because the Blu-ray is about 4,000 yen anyway. So if yeah. you just want the film, that's fine. But if you want the key, that's what it is, and that's that going to be. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's one of these things where it's like limited edition. There's probably no other way to get it. It might be a method, but I extremely doubt it. Um, obviously, in this particular particular image here, you're seeing the actual key used with the memorial uh, memorial um, no virus. But obviously, this should be compatible with all others, shouldn't it? Mm. Um literally if you put it in the, the original one it will just probably say special ranger key and that's it with the mobile it's, it's updated the entire soundboard so where if you put in go buster it would say go buster and then maybe the special movie keys um but now this one says every single team up to probably zenkaija because obviously they've got the guy 
voicing it to come back and go exactly, through everything. Yeah. Um, so this one, I reckon, when you put it in, will probably say something like, uh, "Galleon key activate, yeah." <laughs> like Whatever it is, um, it will say the same thing. So as soon as I get yeah. that bad boy, it's going in the mobile. It's just to be played with. Right. So before we get on to seeing the armor mode, what did you think of the cast return in this particular scene? Quite enjoy. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to say I enjoyed seeing the cast. I enjoyed it so, 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 so much. I don't know what image you're going to show, but I love it ever so So, yeah, obviously, for now, I've got the back view. Uh, view. You're welcome to look at the images. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, all of them, obviously, to the back. Um, I find it fascinating how um, how much some of them have changed. Mainly Guy, because straight off the bat, I saw how much longer his hair's got, and I thought that was great. Um, but, yeah, in this particular thing, we obviously see Marvelous lose an eye i mm -hmm. thought whoa i mean this is a very good way to put in a pirate-esque element into <laughs> yes. it as an extra been, thing yeah it's like they were waiting just, 11 years for this <laughs> yeah it's literally what they were thinking but yeah i love how the how it all looks so good still like the suit i'm not entirely sure why um marvelous is not wearing his uniform in this particular image here but he is fighting other rangers so maybe he's in disguise um now um I think Joe's probably the one that interests me the most because he seems to have his ponytail in that backing image, but in here mm -hmm. it looks like he's gone to more of a short hair. I think that is Joe, isn't it? I could be I wrong. See. Wait for it to I, will... <laughs> I will see. Goddamn internet lag. How dare you be so slow? Um, I think it, it. I think it is Joe. Yeah. Um, oh no, that's Except... yeah. Sorry. Now I'm on Marvelous. He's attacking Space Black or um, yep. Mega Ranger Black. Mega That's Black, how far yeah. it is. Uh, I love that. Uh, 2021 in cinemas now. 2022, yeah. third of the ninth, Blu-ray. Um, that is uh, that is Joe. Yeah, that is Joe. Yeah, I yeah. like the weapon he's got there. Though. I don't know what that is, but I want it. <laughs> premium yeah, Bandai coming cool, next year. Cool. Maybe. <laughs> um, probably. I think Luca's probably the one that looks the most different because, I mean, she. And like the woman, like you know, we've seen her back in the day. She obviously seems more like, you know, she's gone on a bit more with like her roles and stuff like that. And to me, she seems like she's um, started going into like more motherly roles. Because um, mm. like I, I don't know what it is. It's like she's just grown up. It's so much different from when I, compared <laughs> to when I seen her in Gokaija. So I thought that was um, one of the most significant things for all the characters to me. The others, like, you know, they just seem timeless. They still seem like they're teenagers to me. Um, she's the only one that uh, that seems like, you know, she's just, like, just got into her prime and now continuing on yeah. with everything else. She, she's just come to pick her kids up and she's about to go to, a like, a teacher parents conference where she's like yeah. so has my has my child or son or daughter done well <laughs> yeah thank you very much i'm now going to take him to mcdonald's bye <laughs> uh, doc is actually quite interesting I'm, I'm wondering if that actually is a wig though i can't imagine him dyeing that hair that ten intensely I, I don't think i've ever seen the guy really outside of go kaija publicity so i don't know what he usually looks yeah. like i should probably look it up well if you if you watch if you watch Gokaija from episode one to like whenever, he's very ginger, and then it just his hair gets lighter and lighter and lighter all the way through the entire series. <laughs> um, he's not changed; like the, the hair is exactly the same. So I reckon either they said, "Yeah, diet," he's like, "Okay, yeah, I can yeah. relive it." Because they, they'll probably do press tours and stuff. Considering it started out ginger and then got lighter and lighter, maybe this is his yeah. golden age, Doc. <laughs> He's reached his final form. <laughs> uh, I think, um, I think just all the girls in this particular series just look like they've grown up. Uh, they always seem like teenagers in the show, but now, like, um, obviously the princess to me seems a lot more Basco esque in this particular <laughs> the shot. I was like, whoa, one. is she gone evil? I'm a bit concerned. If she goes evil, I'm like, yes, finally, that goodness has just disappeared she's pissed off mm. yay yeah um, but she's got a cooking channel oh so, really oh damn yes yeah. so, so when I, I when she came up on screen i was just like oh you look exactly the same maybe a <laughs> bit of botox maybe i don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh god um oh and obviously we've got guy which is my favorite 
favourite character from uh, from Super Sentai in general because he's the only one who's portraying a Super Sentai fan in a Super Sentai mm. show. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty awesome. He looks a lot more like... I mean, he's still wearing similar attire, but because of his um, hairstyle, he just seems a lot more serious in nature. Um, do you think his character is going to still be quite a light-hearted individual? I think at times, but I think he's going to be more kind of, guys, why are you under such an evil spell? Why are you so evil? I can't let you hurt these people. And then it'll be at the very end, he'll go back to his old style play. He's like, yeah, woo. And then that's it. <laughs> maybe he maybe he dies. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So here's the big thing, the huge thing in this particular um, film. Obviously, story-wise, could be anything. We could just enjoy it nonetheless. However, seeing these two new power-ups, obviously, as you've seen in the text, probably, Gokai Galleon-based um, armor and a, basically a five-blade claw, uh, five claw on blue. Mm. Um, what did you think of these power-ups when you saw them? I kind of like them. I quite like the, the Gokai Galleon. I think it looks nice. Mm. Um, Joe's one, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a power-up because... I imagine that power being something different. Maybe he'll combine his swords again or something. Um, or maybe it's a cannon. I don't know. It did uh, specifically um, say in a text that he did gain this... Gain this um, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but here's the thing. It's showing blue and red. However, that key seems to show, or, or at least suggest, that there's something that is given to pink, yellow, and... Sorry, yeah, pink, yellow, and green as well. So do you think the yeah. other three have something that is yet to be revealed? Yeah, I've, I've heard that they're, they're getting power-ups as well. I think it'd be kind of nice. Maybe it's all part of the ship. So Ooh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, so Marvel has got the, the front. Maybe like the others will have some sort of kind of thing. Because if you look at Joe's thing there, it looks like it could be a cannon. To some, I know it's, I know it's blades. But yeah. the thing that's wrapped around his arm, that could look like it's a cannon type thing. Yeah, I was, um, ex- yeah, I was thinking that maybe um, the others have got like a cannon-esque probably item as a power-up. Maybe as a power-up to what they use the most. So let's say Luca, Luca used the thing where she uses the things as whips. So maybe it's like chains, like she gets an anchor. Um, I don't know why. Uh, That'd be a good one. Very good. Yeah. Doc used... No, was it no aim used like got she used guns more so that could be maybe a cannon or maybe doc has a cannon as well um and that's mainly it maybe it's all parts of the ship hmm. so right. yeah. obviously we have a, like a full frontal view now of the uh, mobile with the power up activated i just love how unius this is um now um is this going to be the first thing you do when you get this said item? And are you actually getting the mobile it, Mark? Yep, already pre-ordered it, already put my deposit down. Nice. <laughs> I'm not going to leave that one out. <laughs> I left the keys out because I, I'm not not made of money, but when they said mobile it, I was like, yes. Like if, it, if it was exactly the same as the original, I would have left it. But apparently it's got sounds from the, the crew. It's got Navi in there. It's got I all the new, new stuff. <laughs> Um, like from uh, Go Ranger all the way up to probably Zenkaija. Mm-hmm. Uh, then obviously, yeah. So I am like all for this. So it wasn't too expensive yeah. either. I generally thought it was going to cost quite a bit, but uh, Toku Collectibles, not sponsored in any way, um, <laughs> they actually had a decent price and you can put a deposit down, which is a good thing. Nice, nice. Oh, I've got one question as well for you. Now, do you think yeah. this should be a thing? Sec Chan meets. Navi. <laughs> they will do. Like they, they will do. Actually, no. I reckon that they will do because apparently Navi is still on Earth with the Zo- uh, Zoogers, and he's coming back for the fifth, five thousandth episode. Apparently. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be good. You know, okay. Or something like that. He said yeah. it in the thing. Right, just quickly for the next couple of minutes. I don't know if anyone has seen these images, but thank you for putting these on there for the particular person I'm about to talk about. Now, as we've seen in the image before, when these um, Zen Kaiju gear was first sort of like sent to Sekchan for it to be created, we had that scene where Stacy was doing the pose for it. Now, here's a little sort of like bit that that you know behind the scenes from I think it's TV Nihon or at least one of the people Ooh. that was 
part of it um where you got um um you know to, uh, to, uh, takada the guy who mm. obviously acts as uh, stacy um sorry no suit actor takada is uh showing um sego gucci the who plays as stacy exactly how to do the pose i just thought this was such a cool little moment to see because it just looks so happy that he's doing it because it turns out that the guy who's plays as stacy originally auditioned to play as kaito in zenkaija i thought like you know sometimes you just find this sort of stuff and i it, honestly some most of the stuff that's probably been posted about behind the scenes has probably gone right past me but at the same time it's like as soon as i grab it i'm like show 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 show, show, yeah. show. <laughs> also do you so know, that's what i thought we showed today also can i add to that so happy. I'll, I'll also add, add to your happiness the role of stacy was made because of him because ah. of his audition, they decided to make the whole Stacy. Stacy wasn't originally going to be in it, so That's he's part fantastic. of it. Yeah, I, li- I like how he kind of is kind of similar to Kaito, though. <laughs> like if he's if mm. shooting his hair, he wouldn't be far off. So I could see easily how he could be Kaito in an instant, and he seems like a chipper bloke compared to the <laughs> character he actually plays. Someone you can go out for a drink with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I love how you can see the suit <laughs> suit actor here just uh, speaking to him. Uh, just trying to mm. show him how to do it and you know just trying to get his arm in the correct pose which i always try to do <laughs> it's but... I, I love it zenkaija yeah it's so great it's so great and it's nice to see that that perfect moment did require a little bit of work <laughs> but yeah just just to see these two sort of interacting in that way i i think one thing i would really love for power morphicon is for not only just sort of like any Super Sentai actor in general, but like current Super Sentai actors would be so great to have. Um, mm. Specifically Gokaija, because like I think it's fair to say that Gokaija is the most significant Super Sentai for the entire Power Ranger fandom, because it was one of those things where as Power Rangers were starting back up and you had Samurai, people obviously saw into the future because social media just blasted Gokaija everywhere and obviously sooner or later we got Super Mega Force. Most people wasn't exactly fond of Super Mega Force because they know that Gokaija just was so much bigger than they ever were. So for a cast of that magnitude to not come to America is really a shame for fans, but I suppose it's up to them at the end of the day. <laughs> oh true. Like I I would love to see them at um Power Morphcon. But I was yeah. just wondering like generally are there Japanese conventions that do this? Because I've never seen like anyone post around like, let's go to a Japanese convention with said actors. Because yeah. I would so heartedly love to get like go to Japan and be like, there's the entire cast of Go Kaija, or yeah. there's Zen Kaija. I'd be like, do you know what? I'm straight in that. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah. it's, it's wondering. I think that's more of an American concept, really. I think once these actors are generally finished with um, their. Um, work on this particular on the particular shows they're on i think they then move on to obviously bigger things um i don't know what it's like for american actors and stuff like that because obviously it's done all over the place they have to fight for the next role but i think for super sentai actors i think they're able to easily access the next role they're gonna do because Mm. you know when you think about it Ranger actors are traveling to New Zealand and staying there, and then they have to go back home. So trying to find work after that point is not as seamless as maybe it is for people in Japan, because they're already they don't have to travel a, such a large ocean in order to go onto the next role. They're already in a position to prepare mm-hmm. for the next one if possible. So I think that works out better for them in that kind of sense. Yeah. Plus they're not away from their family as much either. I can't yeah. imagine. I imagine, well, but then again, I do think they do travel to New Zealand, don't they? So it's a filming location, but it's not as great yeah. a distance. So no, know. I I imagine though that they're possibly not allowed to get work until up to like the end of the series, maybe. Um, you know, occasional roles, just in case. They're like, oh crap, we need you in ADR. Get into this booth, and we'll we'll do it. Um, mm. But I know that you know maybe they can get work. Maybe it's a bit harder. Um, because you see people pop up in like say NYPD Blue or whatever or yeah. something like that, and then you go, oh, there's a person I know. Um, <laughs> that, that's it. I bet you point out, go, that was a Power Ranger because I do that all the time. Yeah, I, I I do think it's funny how when that happens, 
often catches you off guard sometimes when you just see US content with frame directors. You're like, <laughs> I like how we see like Aaron and Cahill quite often. But anyway, um, randomly that's, pops. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, move on from that, shall we? Now, um, now this particular subject that we're talking about today is the crossovers in uh, Super Sentai. Now, obviously, we've had a lot of Kamen Riders as well as Metal Heroes. So, the question I have for you, Mark, is. Do you think they're an important feature in Super Sentai? In Super Sentai, I don't know because you only get a crossover when it comes up to the film. No, no, not the film. Like, well, yeah, the main film if they're going to bring anything. I haven't seen a crossover like this in Sentai for a very long yeah. time. Um, normally, it's crossing over with other Sentais. I think this might be the first one. Could be. I know I'm probably completely wrong. If anyone can correct me, that's absolutely fine. Um, but I haven't seen this much involvement at all since I started kind of watching Go Kaija. And normally this would be all over the, you know, oh, in uh, Go Buster this happened or in Tokuja this happened. So I think this is the first time that properly interacted. But like you had the movie with Marvelous, or say Super Sentai versus Kamen Rider, which was just Marvelous versus Decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think... I think it's just one of those things where they're like, they're like sibling shows because you always see that segment Super Sentai, uh, sorry, Superhero Time, mm. um, you know, linking both Kamen Rider and Super Sentai in that format. I mean, generally they are brother siblings because they're they branch off from the same creator, um, but like um, I do think that it is quite good to have that connection with each other because of the fact that there's so many different aspects to tokusatsu and to see like certain things not really get their position fully mm. in for western audiences i feel like super sentai is now that place where you know those things that people people previously missed might actually be getting their attention more now mm. um but generally, I think, you know, both Kamen Rider and Super Sentai are so brilliantly made that, you know, it could easily be fitted in for Kamen Rider to exist in the same place as Super Sentai. Although it does seem that most of the time they are in separate dimensions, mm. isn't that the case? Yeah. They, <laughs> it's a bit they, of a shame, really. They have, they have said it and stuff like that. Um, I don't mind it. I, I would like them to team up a, a little bit more, I think. I think, like, you know, they're probably in the same very similar locations they they could easily just go oh we're, just we're gonna have this character in this one this week and then combine them because i think it works perfectly for what they for what they're aiming at at least mm. um so i think it'd be fun because it, it just gives i think it gives more excitement but then i kind of think that maybe if a show is failing if you bring in this like thing like how supergirl was in season one where it was like, yeah. oh, the this, this show's failing, it's not doing very well, how do we bring up the ratings, let's bring in The Flash, and everyone was just like, oh, now I'm going to watch this, and they had to watch that one episode, and then it dropped down, so I think, I kind of had that sort of feeling when it came with um, with Zenkaija, I was like, are they just bringing in Saber characters to make this better so people watch it? And I have mm. got to say, the amount of difference between the two shows. Oh, there's so much difference between it. Yeah. You need to watch yeah. it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I, I one thing I think that was um, that obviously they're preparing for is that crossover particular movie. Um, however, it was um, sort of like put out there that this might actually be the last time that Kamen Rider and Super Sentai will have an anniversary feature together. Mm. Now, I don't think they mean... I, when I was reading it, I, I don't think they meant we're never doing an anniversary thing for these again. I just think this is going to be the last time that there's going to be such a crossover mm. with anniversaries that it would be significantly placed in the movie. Um, was there a particular um, uh, movie or crossover that stood out in your mind? Not really, not with crossovers. Um, I think Go has probably been the only one like that. Um, Rear Soldier, they had it thing because I was watching the Lupin Ranger versus Power Ranger with. <laughs> I love that. It's the longest one. Lupin Ranger versus Power Ranger versus Rear Soldier. And then 
like I can imagine the next one being like Lupin Ranger versus Pattern Ranger versus Carmen Rider versus blah de blah versus this versus that, and I'm just like, tick God, guys, yeah. great fun. <laughs> I mean, I've always remembered the Go Kaija stuff more because even in um, the crossovers they've had, they've always been a lot more significant and up there. Obviously, for um, Zen Kaija, they're obviously having those gears put in there, but like. You see little featurettes of different seasons, like you saw the um, the uh, Q Tama from Russo, sorry, from Q Ranger that was representing Kamen Rider X Eight, which is cool. Mm. But you know, it's it's rare that you actually see like a full line of stuff. So when you have Go Kaija uh, and they had crossover episodes. My favourite one has got to be the Meta Heroes because in each one of them got their own Metal Ranger key, mm. um, sorry Metal Metal Hero key representing different things. And I and I've I mean I've only seen Beetleborgs, so never got to see <laughs> B Fighter or B uh, Fighter Kabuto. So those were f- so cool to see again because I yeah. really love the designs of those. But yeah, I think. Where you have something acting at the same time, I feel like those crossovers are necessary. But the fact that they're able to take something from from the past and bring it into the present and reuse it in that sort of sense, I love that. I really, really think that makes uh, crossovers so important because mm. it just sort of reignites passions for different things. Um, I think even it's interesting how Beast Morphers had an episode that reused a metal hero in that. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. Mm. Obviously, they didn't exactly call him a metal hero. They didn't use similar names. It never was meant to be a character that was going to have his own spin-off or anything. But it was still cool to have him in there. Yeah. And it, it makes it makes you wonder if current generations are going to ask themselves, oh, I wonder if he's from for anything specific or if it just happened to be made. And then find out, oh, actually, this is from uh, a metal hero series. I, I thought that was pretty, pretty dope. Mm. It's not bad. Like I like it. Like it. It does show stuff, but I don't know if like kids would be like, "Oh, hey, guess what? Um, I, where does that one come from?" Because it's a lot harder to find it. I think it's only there because they had the suits remade for like the crossover with Gokaija as well as like maybe a few others. But you know, it was very random to have, which I generally enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, um, obviously, we only saw sub characters from this particular one so would you have preferred that the main feature of you know well you know since we obviously didn't see the main character from Comrade saber would you have preferred the main character to be in this or are you glad that it was the other characters featured in that show i would have loved to have had the main characters in there but i kind of from watching one film to the other I kind of figured out why they um, why they why they gave like the other characters because it was just way too silly, <laughs> way too silly. Um, I generally thought Saber would have gone with them. I thought that would have been a thing. Um, you know, you had Zox steal the book and be like, "Oh, I've got it now," and yeah. he'd be like, I, "I want my Wonderland book back." Yeah. Um, so, because I don't know any anything about these two uh, common like common riders apart from their brother and sister. And what, mm. one loves a hug. <laughs> um, that's <laughs> but we'll it. Have so, to, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you haven't watched any of the Kamen Rider series, please start with Saber. It's worth doing. And you can definitely watch the movie then once soon as it comes out. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that pretty much covers the crossover sort of discussion. We should really now right into the episode review that we're going to be doing for episode oh, 20. Now we can't, we can't start it until I talk about Saber. Because... <laughs> We're going to play a game on stream very quickly. Is Mark lying? So, Bryn. Yes. At the very beginning of Kamen Rider Saber, um, it's not actually starts with Kamen Rider Saber. It's uh, two Kaiser fighting the monster of that series. And the monster opens a portal and sucks um, them both in. Yes or no? Ooh. Yes. (laughs) No. Damn it. <laughs> Techni- okay, technically, so it starts off with um, everyone kind of chilling in the park type thing. A monster does come through for Portal, but Zox is chasing him, and you see Kamen Rider, all three morphs, 
Um, you also have the monster who is the exact same monster in the first in the episode that we've had now um, is able to make wishes and whatever wishes that he makes this therefore comes true but it with a slight twist um i'm just going in okay so second question should be an easy one zox steals everything in the uh, in the bookshop that common rider saber is which then causes them to attack him for half the series or half the episode yes or no Yes. <laughs> oh, no, no, Damn no. <laughs> uh, he does steal a few things, but he doesn't steal the books. They all think he steals the books, but it's because of a wish of Saber who makes a mistake. But Zox does ah. meet all the other characters. Okay. Okay, all right. I'm going to try to find another one for you. Okay. So. Um, oh, I don't Better know. Okay. This is one more because you got to make sure we're doing it. <laughs> okay, really quickly. Um, at one the end of the guys. episode. <laughs> Uh, while well, everyone gets the power up, Zox uses his power up. Yes or no? No. Correct. He doesn't, but all of them do. They all use their powers, um, and he steals the ocean book because he likes the books, and that's pretty much it. So basically, uh, they don't know who he is. He has some really cool things. He fits a lot more into the Kamen Rider universe than he does with the Super Sentai. So now we can move on to the... It was a good... I give that one a five, because that was great. <laughs> five books out of five. <laughs> yeah, we should probably do a Carmen Rider series, especially as a celebration of that 50th anniversary. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. See how everyone tailors to it. But, um, yeah, so for this episode, obviously we had different debuts in this one. So let's just quickly go to those now. So, we had shown Super's two Kaiser. This is so awesome. Yeah. So, I think it's funny how in this particular moment, before this happened and he, he changed into him, it was hilarious how he called um, the Zen Kaiju gear. And mm. Kaiju was like, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can use it in the next episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stay hydrated, guys. <laughs> yeah, I have just let you drink. An entire one of those. Nice. It's a big boy. Yeah. So um, I think this is a pretty cool power up. Um, what did you think of the particular armor set he has? Kind of liked it. Kind of really gives like a throw. Um, kind of reminds me a bit of Kamen Rider uh, with the capes at least, but also kind of Magi Ranger. Yeah, um, yeah. So I generally kind of thought it looked really nice as a power up. Um, it's I think slightly better than uh, Two Kaisers. Uh, than uh, Zenkaiser's. Yeah, I don't think. Just yeah, I, 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 I like Zenkaiser's more because I don't think the cape works well with the sort of um, time fire esque that he seems to possibly have. Because even the Curex doesn't actually have a cape, so I thought that put me off a bit. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I thought his abilities were pretty interesting because he has that kind of time phase speed ability, which I think is pretty cool. Mm. Um, what do you think of his uh, fighting abilities? That was okay. He seems to be a lot faster, um, mm. which was kind of good. I, I really want to see more. This is where I kind of thought that maybe this wasn't the right play time to to debut his power up, like maybe in the next yeah. episode. Because if you're focused with Kamen Rider, then you'd want more focus on them for the first point. Um, yeah. Like how Saber kind of focused on that on Two Kaiser, so that's what I kind of thought. Um, but majority good powers, I liked it. Can't yeah. wait to see more. I was hoping he was kind of going to use his gun more though, because that is kind of more of a time fire esque thing. But I suppose mm. the blade does kind of come into it too. Um, now I just want to quickly show this image specifically because I've always wondered how the hell they get into that, um, you know, crocodile. <laughs> um, you know, ship that he has, but nice. To, so to actually see a door is quite a revelation to me. I was like, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like it opens there. <laughs> Out of but, yeah. all the things in this episode, the door <laughs> was the thing you loved. Well, it's one of those things where I've always loved mechas and I've always loved Zords and stuff like that. Um, so when you see these things on the show, I'm always thinking, I wonder what the actual interior is like, and then you think. Well, how the hell is that room there and there and there and there and there when it does this, mm. this, this, and this? <laughs> so, 
yeah, it's one of those things that always frustrated me. I've always wanted a proper layout, and I've also wanted explanations to how something like huge can fit in something like that, which in grand scale scale of things. But oh well, oh well. Uh, oh, someone just said hello. Hi, Jalen. What's up, dude? Hello. Um, but like, yes. Um, yeah, I thought this was a pretty good moment. A good moment as well. Um, now we saw obviously some of the silliness featured usually in Zenkaija sucking in <laughs> such a serious character and there was brilliant moments in it as well like Majin being hugged by um one of the female riders considering she's supposed to be a serious character surprised everyone even me like i haven't seen any of saber yet obviously however that moment i could instantly tell um just how significant it was her hugging because they both seem like serious characters which mm. you know i think as an episode that crosses over and you may not have seen Saber, it's a good way of... It, it brilliantly shown enough about the character to actually tell you enough that you needed to know for it to be significant in different scenes. Would you agree yeah. with that, Mark? I would say, I would say, yeah. Like Again, it feels like a very serious character. So when they hugged, I was more like, does that mean something else? Am I just thinking way too much into it? <laughs> or is this kind of like a she never hugged anyone now i want the next episode to have at least a little Majin figure or something like mm. i would love that or a little one of those plushies that they have i would love that but for her to hug i generally thought you want know that's that's nice like a nice addition or maybe it's because they they were in a dangerous peril thing and that's maybe, therefore maybe. that's the reason why mm. so that's what i reckon <laughs> okay um now, uh, did you think that the uh, silliness nature was quite a funny thing to see introduced in this, or did you not have, was you not a fan of it? It's the reason why I was like, you need to watch Saber, watch this episode. Mm. Okay, so the main thing is in this one is all the seriousness from Saber was really good. It worked really well for what it is, but when switching into Zenkaija, I thought it'd be a bit more serious, not oh, let's all dress up like girls because we've got to try and get the monster in. I thought that maybe they could flint to get there. Mm -hmm. um, I will say the guy from Kamen Rider Saber looked pretty good in a uh, kimono. Not going to lie, it was like, damn, that guy's got muscles. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I just generally thought that it, I, I didn't like the silliness. Like I loved all this other special effects, but just the silliness was a little bit too much for me. I was just a bit... Kind of, I was really off-put after going... Oh my god, this is a yeah, I'm done. So it no. was the one time I didn't want it to be. Yeah, I mean, I feel it all worked out and it worked, played it pr brilliantly. I loved the different scenes in it. I loved how Zox was interacting with them and how, because uh, it spanned right off from what I can tell about this, uh, the the concept of how serious and the interactions were. Um, Kaito obviously coming into it and being all innocent with the others, it was great. And even the Magian scenes where she was captured was also great. <laughs> um, but yeah, was there a thing you could think they could have done differently in this particular episode? I think kind of make it a bit more serious. Like the whole, like I generally just got a bit bored with the whole, the hijinks. Uh, mm -hmm. I loved everything else, like the fighting thing. Um, I think that character could have been a bit more serious, but I did kind of like the the fact that the gears. Now I, I think what made me laugh was Ron, where he's like, "Oh, I want a common rider too." And I generally thought that's quite funny, like yeah. it just thingy. But uh, I like the abilities. I like the the serious. I just generally just didn't like the the humor in this one. It just didn't. It didn't. You got such a serious character, yeah. and then being silly, and I just you I don't like that. it. But I remember seeing, I mean, I haven't seen much of Saber, as I've already stated, as you've probably already guessed, as I've kept yeah. saying it. But there was a scene I remember seeing online where it was to do with the main character speaking to, I'm guessing, a librarian in that particular series. And mm. he mentioned something about, oh, I suppose there's another book that could help us. And um, he was like, the guy was like, uh, no, there's no book. There's no book. Are you sure? No, there's no book. <laughs> See, the, there's different there is difference between comedy and as, as i say so saber from what i've seen i've only seen a few episodes and it's more serious and that's fine yeah with zenkaija it's more i don't know it's like having 
a really nice meal and you're like yum 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 and then you have a really bad dessert and then you you go and the chef laughs at you how dare you like my dessert <laughs> um, i just think it could have been a bit more serious i it, the bad uh, blah 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 that's all i can say <laughs> Now, what did you think of the specials? Now, I love the I love the gears in this. I like how it's green instead of a gold. I thought that was great. Um, but what did you think of the representation of each of these super common uh, riders? I loved it. I really want them to use it again. I don't want it to be a one-off. Like I would love it if they turned around and went, say that oh, we can't fight this. Let's use rider power, and then they use the the weapon. I would. I just. I don't want it to be a. One-off one-off mm. like that would irritate me if it did yeah um firstly what did you think of juran i liked it i thought his time like seeing him into the future and then using that slash that he gets to use is pretty pretty awesome mm. obviously changing his future is kind of the whole esque of zio did you think that was a good representation of that Carmen rider or have you not seen that show i have not seen that one i know <laughs> Zara, so i know all of them <laughs> yeah. um so I thought they were very good representations of them. Um, I think I really like the whole sword hitting more of it. Um, so it's nice for him to see the, oh, this is what's going on. This is the power. I'm going to have to move over here, I think. No, is it more over here? Yes. I don't know where I am in this thing. <laughs> there we go. Um, it needs to be there. Um, so, yeah, I like the representation. I, it just worked well. What did you think of it? I thought it was pretty good. I loved the slash. I think that was the main feature. But I just think it's so cool how that head thing for the well it wasn't even in his main form it was a second form of zio was used perfectly with that helmet I, I think it just worked well um but yeah I thought, I thought it was a good representation what do you think of the zero one being used by gowan um i thought i didn't i said i didn't know what his powers were so so yeah, it's basically his it speed- main like, I think he's like special attack, his main sort of like finisher. Uh, that's basically what he was using. Uh, uh, Rising Impact is what it's called, as you can see here. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought his was kind of the best one. Mm. I don't know what it was, but yeah, I think it was I just agree. like, I've taken out the bad guys really quickly, done. So I think he was kind of the, the, the best one. Mm-hmm. I do agree with that. It was a really good one. Uh, I love the if, uh, how I love the tech slamming onto the screen. I've always loved mm. that from Zero One. Halfway through seeing that, I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> but <laughs> I've not even started yeah. it, so we're, we're okay. Yeah, nice, nice. So, um, Sabre, now that was obviously representation, uh, re- represented as well. Um, I think it's a bit weird how he has the sword, though. I would kind of, uh, if it was a bit weird how currently ongoing Carmen Rider series has his main weapon kind of obtained by someone else, that, that, that's the only thing that's weird to him. Man. Yeah. But um, do you think that was the best good. representation because obviously it is the main character's uh, particular attack and uh, weapon yeah because it, it just turned around and it had the whole the the uh was it like the wonder book alice whatever it was i i like that sort of thing mm. um i also love the fact that sec chan was just like when uh kai is like hey which, which power range is it or sorry which super sensor is these he's like no it's not it's from common rider yeah that was a good moment. and i'm like Yes. Mm. Thanks. Thanks for telling me about that, yeah. Sekchan. Obviously, we had um, the final attack for two Kai's I used. Now, do you think this is going to be his actual super final attack for for that partic- yeah. particular one, or do you think there's more to it because he's with a teammate? Um, I think it will be the one. Like, if I think that if the, he's got a teammate, you'll see it. Mm. But I think the main blast will be it. Now, when he shot the rockets, I generally did think that should have been Kaito because yeah. that's, I mean, I don't remember the, the Q-Rex shooting missiles. So I generally oh, kind of thought that maybe... Oh, he does have a missile maybe... arm. Like, I think that is one of his like, main weapons. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, for his mega sword form, though. Yeah. Um, I liked it. I just think it's cool. I just generally thought the missiles... They reminded me more of the, the Dragon Zord than anything, I think. Yeah, I agree. I do like the missile effect. That was pretty cool. But I do wonder if there's something more to it. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now, episode rating, what did you think of this particular episode, Erlen? I want to give it higher. I really do, because of the Kamen Rider element. I want to give it a five, but I'm not. And I don't want to give it a four. I'm going to give it a three. Because a three? Okay. I don't think they utilize Kamen Rider really well. Like, in Saber... Oh, they bear utilize- in mind, guys, we're trying to rate this as a Senkaija episode rather than a 
uh, Saber episode. Saber. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, I generally, like, if they treated it like Saber, I would have given a full five. Because mm. they, they used two Kaiser a lot more, and they used him to what he is, and mm. that's what I liked. For Zenkaija, I felt like they, they just dropped the ball from the good thing. I'm going to give it I'll give it a 3.5. Mm, I think I'm going to round it up to a 4 for you because of the fact that obviously in Kamen Rider Saber, they brought Zenkaija to them. This was bringing Saber into Zenkaija, which means that anything that was influenced by Saber would be Zenkaija. Now, um, I thought the use of the characters and how they interacted with our cast that are featured in this show was just great it was perfect i loved it <laughs> so for that very reason i'm giving it a four um obviously other things included like the combat using uh rider gears which probably will be used in the film as well so we just have to wait and see and probably you know riders are going to use ranger gear a uh, ranger stuff we'll have to wait and see for that too but yeah i think you know some of the things that they had megazord fight was all right but I liked how the foe in this one, the the world that they were facing, was was um was a uh, decent, uh, bit of a weird one, obviously, because it's based on a holiday, which I, f- yeah. uh, which I should probably say, that holiday they're talking about, they're using it now because of the Olympics, because in I think there's one more episode to go, and then they're having a hiatus because of the Olympic events. I thought I thought it was this <laughs> one, the Saber episode was um the last one, like before they were on a break. Oh, it might be this one. Oh, sure. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see, guys. I'm sure we'll find out something to talk about during the next show. But yeah, um, most likely we might go on a hiatus, but we'll see how it goes. Cause obviously, we are mainly work reviewing Zenkaija, but there might be some good stuff to put onto the show. So we'll keep you guys informed. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything. So where can everyone find you on social media, Mark? You can find me on Twitch, YouTube. Instagram at uh, as LM and Twitter as Mainstream Live. How about you, kind sir? You can find me on at Henshin Asset on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you, my guys. I hope you enjoyed this particular show that we had today. Um, also, uh, we'll discuss more about um, what happens in the next show. So even if we go in a high S, it's because then Kaiju may be having that. Um, we will at least have one more after this or after that time to obviously talk about something special in anything that pops up online. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, we'll keep you posted on most likely Twitter. So yes. All right. Thanks guys. Uh, thank you. Of course, Mark. So until next bye. time. Bye. Bye.